I'm the mom who knows not a, my name is Brianna, and this is the Mama Knows Not a podcast. And I have a special guest with us today. She is a writer as well as something that I'm very intrigued to learn about, an expat. So Aditi, thank you so much for coming to share your story with us and your books. Um, so I want to first start by asking you, what is your um, background professionally? So first of all, thank you so much for having me. Of course. Uh, I am so excited to share my journey as it may. <laughs> uh, and uh, about my profession, uh, technically, I'm a computer engineer. Ooh, you fancy. <laughs> <laughs> I can't do that stuff. It's so difficult. <laughs> yeah, it was difficult for me too. <laughs> Um, so well I love that too because as a computer engineer you know that's a it's a field where so many women are underrepresented and then of course like when you factor in like diversity you know having diverse women you know they're just not as populated there so I think that's fantastic okay so you have this background in computer science and then you became a mom so what was your journey into motherhood it was interesting, actually, that uh, I was technically a, a computer engineer. Then I worked in the retail field in the IT department. So I was oh. kind of like in that weird mix where I wasn't completely working in technical field, but I was still helping mm-hmm. technically. And then, of course, you get married, you come to US and that then you don't get a visa, right? So uh, it was a couple of years uh, before I got into, uh, I mean, I decided, we decided to have a baby. And uh, I was blogging at the time because my husband was like, oh, you know, you can't get a job uh, Mm. right now. uh, So how about you do this thing called blogging? Like it's very in right now. And he's like a techie. He's like a thorough techie. He loves everything technical. That's awesome. So um, I'm like, okay, yeah, sure. Why not? You know, so I used to study writing. And then my son came along. Uh, of course, that time we didn't know. It. And then we were discussing. And I, my husband and I, it's very interesting. I was raised at home uh, by my mom. Like, you know, mm-hmm. she, she worked. She used to do a lot of part-time gigs, but she never, like, worked full-time. Uh, and I believe that we have a very strong bond. And mm-hmm. I discussed this with my husband. I said, whenever I have a baby, I want to be home with my kids. And I used to think that's a very easy thing to do, right? Because <laughs> it's a choice we make and, you know, things like that. Mm-hmm. I mean, no regrets. Of course, we we have made sacrifices. We've it, But it was a very conscious decision when my husband and I were very clear that, you know, when we have a baby, you know, I want to be home. And uh, it was it was a great decision for me because my pregnancies have always been very hard on me. Mm. So uh, it worked out great in the lo- in a bigger scheme of things, and uh, motherhood was very interesting because uh, it was a boy, and uh, <laughs> I was like, oh, I want a girl, and then when I found out, and I was like, mm, no, I'm not really sure, <laughs> and then uh, I saw. One of my friends playing with their son and I was like, wait, that's pretty cool. You know, my husband mm-hmm. will have a boy to play with and that they will have a bond. And, you know, we always have next time you'll see. Yeah. And uh, uh, and that's it. it when, when my daughter was born and then, you know, um, it was like a wonderful, wonderful uh, experience because, you know, of course, the pregnancy was hard. But then she was a C-section and things were very easy, uh, relatively. And she's mm-hmm. touch would be a better baby my son didn't sleep very well apart uh, as they grew up I realized you know there are so many challenges I face because we are Indian Mm -hmm. here who are American Uh, they were of course born American we we took a little bit more time to become American than them we were like (laughs) Americans and we were like we had to really work at it (laughs) you had to really want that title (laughs) Yes. yes of course and uh so it was it was a challenge, but I could relate to a lot of things because I was raised in Kuwait, mm-hmm. and uh, I could I was like, wait, you know, uh, I know why you don't want to. My son would be like, I don't want to wear these Indian clothes; they're itchy. And I, was, I remembered those sweaters that mom would get from India, and I used to hate wearing them because they used to be so itchy. Yeah, uh, compared to like material you would get in Kuwait, and I used to tell him like, why do I have to wear? And she's like, no, but they gave it like my relatives would give me very lovingly, and so my mm-hmm. mom would be like, no, you should wear them. I was like, but why? And now I could relate, you know, like he, my, mm-hmm. it took, it took me a long time to understand that, you know, wait, what? 
at the park one lady very obnoxiously asked me like why does your son speak hindi you speak hindi full like you stay at home right so why doesn't your son already know the language and i was very offended i was mm. i'm still now offended but then her question also made me think about why is it that my son doesn't speak hindi mm. and uh, i was like wait but uh, then i realized that i'm more I'm a, like i'm not completely indian so my husband and i speak to each other in english most of the time like i was raised in kuwait i don't know what his excuse is <laughs> but, but we speak mostly english and i was like okay so that's one reason and of course by the time we had my daughter it was too late for my son because we were in that whole transition phase mm-hmm. uh, but uh, yes yeah, so the journey and then of course i started raising whole children.com just so that i could i mean people think it was this altruistic thing where i was you know creating this platform for writers but honestly i was just greedy to learn more i wanted to learn oh. what more challenges there were i wanted to learn from other parents because facebook groups and everything is wonderful but mm-hmm. when people are writing articles they really put themselves into it and they give these tips and their editing has that platform has been so enriching for me mm. uh, even the books that we worked on the anthology uh, have been so enriching because i've learned so much from other parents and i truly believe that uh, you know as parents of kids who are like now i'm my kids my nine, are 9 and 12 and mm. i tell to a lot of parents i'm like i have lots to share if you need information but i have lots more to learn because you're mm. not really still growing so it's it's a learning experience so my journey from computer engineer to motherhood i think that's as concise as it can be <laughs> <laughs> so you met you met your husband in india and then you guys immigrated over no no uh, i just you I met my husband online ours is an arranged marriage so i nice. met him like it's it was a fixed uh online meetup basically okay cool so i met his mother before i met him oh, and uh, uh, yes and then we exchanged emails so we were exchanging emails i think and then we chatted for a while for 6 months and then we mm-hmm. were like don't like each other uh and uh, yeah then we decided to get engaged after getting engaged then we met a couple more times and then we got married oh that's incredible oh that's a whole podcast right there oh my goodness i i because this is something i find is like so fascinating too is how do you embrace these cultural roots and traditions right yes. and embrace you know your role as an american because in, they're not mutually exclusive right mm-hmm. but it is they're very dynamic um yeah. entities and traditions and cultures that come with both of those yeah. so how how do you navigate that well it's very tricky to be honest mm. uh, because uh, being raised in kuwait like uh, i was surrounded by uh, gujarati families which is like a subculture in india okay. from gujarat and then i had muslim friends and then i had south indian friends uh, then i had uh, my neighbors were christian so like for me uh, my kids when they were growing up like easter was a thing like just when they were growing up um, mm-hmm. is a thing sorry my my daughter every easter like she they they my kids are super excited we'll uh, understand the story because i'm very about you know we don't just celebrate stuff we also learn what's behind it mm-hmm. uh, christmas is huge in my home because just in, it's not even about presents it's about decorating the tree it's about making the cookies it's about yep. you know uh, having the carols at home and you know things like that yeah because uh, that's what i grew up with so for me uh, so a lot of people you know often tell me oh you don't you know seem like very indian i worked uh, in us like for 3 months last year it was not a good experience uh, but <laughs> but uh, uh, the people there were great and uh, she's uh, one of the ladies said she's like uh, oh you don't do this and i said but let me tell you you know the caveat is that i'm not a typical indian mm. i was not raised in india with lot of tradition and lot of cultural roots and lot of things so for me it's relatively easier to find my evolution of them mm. like as a mother now my mother now says that oh you should do these prayers because she's like 70 plus so now she's found religion and now she's like oh you know you should do this you should do that and you know i tell her i said mom i'm i'm 40 and i have two kids and i still do more currently than you used to do when i was that age and mm. i know when i be work kids because my mom was so busy with taking care of the home with so many responsibilities cooking three meals a day and you know everything like that mm-hmm. she never had time to you know uh, do religious things per se uh, so for, and for me personally i've read a lot of mythology and i've read a lot of cu- cultural texts and i do believe that we need to understand everything before we start practicing it 
अंडरस्टैंडिंग हेल्प्स अस बिल्ड वैल्यूज एंड दोस ट्रेडिशन आर जस्ट यू नो काइंड ऑफ लाइक अ नाइस addition to everything yeah so so there are many cultural traditions that i speak up about that you know i don't think those work anymore we need to change them mm. uh, and a lot of indians are doing that themselves like for example uh, raksha bandhan is a festival actually let's talk about bhai dooj because they both are very similar so it's a festival where traditionally the girl ties a thread to the boy saying uh, and it's kind of like a promise uh, he makes to her that i'll protect you always and now we all say as an parents and i'm happy to say most indians do this that uh, all siblings will or cousins tie to each other and they say oh this is a promise we are making to each other oh. because girls can protect boys as much as boys can protect girls yeah. and sometimes more so uh, because uh, you know that that is true women are strong women are you know if you don't have to be able mm-hmm. to lift like pounds of weight to define strength mm-hmm. sometimes strength is about being emotionally there and uh, Amen to that. So many things like that. <laughs> Amen. So, yeah. <laughs> so, um, we are evolving, and uh, I think uh, that's. And I always tell everyone uh, that when you are following traditions, if you hold them really tight, it's like mm-hmm. sad. You know, kids kind of run away from it because they don't see the need of it. Mm. Right. So for my kids, I always explain to them. I said, "This is why we're doing it." And you know, you can choose in your home whether you want to do it or not. Yeah. But this is why we are. You know. Uh, I hope that you carry it forward. So, uh, and I'm I might be digressing a little, but this is just okay. an example that suppose on a festival day I'm not feeling well now, and like I said, now they're like nine and twelve. So I'm like, okay, I'm so done. I don't want to do it, you know, because it's work, you know, yeah. setting up and praying. It takes time. It takes energy because you decorate everything and stuff. Mm-hmm. And uh, my kids will be like, no, mom, let's do it. So they may not do very grandly, but they they'll do a little bit. Mm-hmm. So I remember a couple of Easter's ago. I think I had a migraine, and my daughter came and she said, "Mom, what about the Easter egg hunt?" So I said, "I don't really feel like doing it. Can you like just skip it? I'll we'll do it tomorrow." I said. She's like, "No, Easter is today. We have to do it today." And uh, she said, "You know what? It's okay." I she picked out a dress. She said, "Wear this dress. Don't even think about what you have to wear. Wear this dress so and cute. the shoes." And I'll put the uh, so I rarely do candy. We'll always put something yeah. else in the eggs. So she made chits. She put them in the egg. She hid them all over, and she said, "Okay, let's all find." So it's it's a mix for that. That's why I say it's like a healthy mix. I'm yeah. trying to make it healthy. I don't claim to know all the answers, but I'm trying. So I think as long as you try, and as long as you are keep putting one step in the direction that you want to go to, mm-hmm. and I think this applies to everything in life as much as applies to heritage and culture. I love that. I think that's so great. I remember when was I was born and raised Catholic. So I have there's so much tradition in the Catholic Church. Yeah. And but interestingly enough, the more people I've talked to who might be like Latino, Mexican, you know, yeah. um you, Filipinos, like there are so many shared experiences because Catholicism is deeply rooted in in certain aspects of our culture. So I'm Irish and Italian, very Catholic. entities right uh what so you have this like shared experience even though like we look sound you know come from different backgrounds like so many of my friends are like that was your mom too <laughs> and you find this like common ground based on something like so obscure but you forget that so much so many of our countries founded on you know religion and customs and all these traditions and how that has just like parlayed out into the world so i love that you're saying that and it sounds like You growing up in Kuwait was like a really good base for basically what you're doing now. So, before I get into your books, I want to ask, what do you appreciate about raising your kids in America, and what don't you like about it? <laughs> <laughs> oh, okay. Um, Why well, I, I I didn't think of this one. <laughs> um, no pressure. There's no pressure. No. Um, I think uh, what I appreciate. here is uh about raising my kids here per se i feel that we have a lot more freedom okay. in terms of uh, and this i think is more related to family than anything else mm. is that uh, uh we have because the thing is i think i cannot answer that i think i i'm honestly i cannot answer what i love raising because it's very similar to how it was in kuwait ah so uh, that's in an kuwait, answer Yes, yeah. no. Because, uh, uh, in Kuwait, what it was was like we were living in Kuwait. It was a country which was not ours, mm-hmm. 
Mm-hmm. Uh, we, you can't even get a, you cannot get citizenship in Kuwait no matter how many years you live there. Mm. So, um, but uh, it, it's still home for us, right? Mm-hmm. Because we build a life there. And uh, we experienced everything. We enjoyed the freedom and everything. We did everything the way we wanted to, uh, but we lived in our Indian community, mm-hmm. right? Um, here, what I love is that my kids, yes. So I think the answer to that specific question, and I'm sorry to everyone listening, I really worked my talk <laughs> my way to the answer, is that my kids uh, experience cultures different from our mm. own. Uh, when they sit on the bus, uh, they, you know, they speak to their friends who are from different countries, you know, and then uh, different religions. And uh, they're still accepted. They feel much more accepted than we used to. Mm. Um, I was never like we there was a big barrier between us and Arab kids mm. growing up because somehow um, they used to think they were better than us it, it was just in a lot of things they used to do uh, but that does not happen here uh, I still remember like you know when we used to go to the Twin Hickory that's a park near my home sorry I'm so used to saying the name uh, the park near our home and doesn't matter what culture, like all the older kids would always take the younger kids into their wing and play with them. And mm-hmm. that was wonderful to have. Like I remember that, you know, we, if you saw an Arab kid on the uh, swings or mm-hmm. on the slides, you do not go there. Oh, okay. You just stay away because, you know, they might push you, you know, it was, it was just rough. They were not like being mean, just very rough and not apologetic about it. So mm. it was kind of like that. Uh, what I don't like is also similar actually to be very honest uh, is while the kids are being accepted uh, and the kids know that you know we are accepted mm-hmm. it's their vibe you know the parents are not like that the parents as parents we find it very hard to assimilate with other communities unless we have a direct neighbor who's the same you know mm-hmm. here uh, it's kind of like you know uh, for Diwali I find I'm like okay should I invite people how will they react yeah. Uh, my in fact my uh, sparkles of joy book came from the fact that my son wanted to celebrate Diwali with his friends. Ah. And uh, and for a Diwali party all their friends come. But I'm very hesitant to invite the parents because I'm like I don't know how they would think would they be okay what is it? And uh, and that's just for Diwali because and because it happens for Diwali because yeah. they're never invited to any Christmases. They're never invited to uh, any uh, their homes like as adults. Right? Yeah, I see. Usually for kids, what it happens in at least Indian communities is if the kids are getting along, the parents also meet up and then, you know, you become friends. Mm-hmm. But that doesn't happen with adults. So that's something I wish that, you know, if we could all, you know, celebrate things together like Christmases and Thanksgiving and things like that. Uh, I'm sure it's more, maybe also more to do with where I'm living personally, because I've, I know a lot of my other friends and other, um, like other influencer friends and author friends that they have. A more reach into the community that way mm. um, so that's just my personal experience and you know I, I just that's just something I wish was a little different that that you know that uh, yeah. invisible barrier wasn't there I don't know what why that hesitation comes uh, but it's just there yeah no I totally understand I get I get that we have um my aunt and uncle have uh, a couple of friends and they're from India they go back annually and they host every year for their friends a huge Diwali party yeah. and I'm always like oh and everybody dresses up and they wear with the traditional yeah. like I, I don't remember what the dresses are called but everybody's like yeah, in traditional parties, yeah yeah and you're just like oh like even the people who aren't Indian like respect yeah. the tradition and yeah. you know find these really cool outfits and everything yeah. and I'm just like oh it looks like so much fun I'm like mm-hmm. I want to go you know and learn um and it's so funny that like, so interesting that you say this. Um, I've been traveling a lot uh, recently and I watched this um, movie on a plane and I forget, I think it's called What's Love Got to Do With It? Okay. And it's um, with some English a- actors, but um, it's this whole thing about this Pakistani family and they live right next door to the traditional white British family okay. and how their lives have always been intertwined. And, you know, the son decides he's going to opt in for like, you know, the traditional like arranged marriage and da da da. And they go through like the whole ritual from like Pakistan and like, have the, like I think it's like a three or four day celebration. I can't remember. Yeah. Yeah. But, but it's like stunning. It's similar, yeah. yeah. And you're just like, oh my gosh, this is what they, ha- this is incredible. And yeah. just about, 
trying to keep like the traditions alive and like did it and then ends up like he's been in love with the neighbor chick the whole time so you know mm -hmm. it's just like very interesting how you you don't realize sometimes what's right next door is such mm -hmm. a dynamic learning experience i feel yes. sometimes like um you know you know is my tradition as cool as your tradition is the way i'll put it mm -hmm. like i've had christmases my whole life like yes. i've never got to experience diwali like yeah i would love to have that for my own cultural experience well, of but, course. But, yeah, but but i've never thought about like how you might want that for your experience yes right like, it's I, the same. I would love to like i i would love for my kids to uh be invited on christmas as well like it's yeah. not even just about me it's about you know my kids getting the same experience if they are because i had the like my christian neighbors like i say like i was a pillar in their home yeah um, I said, actually, you know what, Rihanna? My parents never attended the Christmas parties either. Hmm. Okay, so that's very interesting, isn't it? Yeah. Like, uh, like I'm sure they invited them, but I, they were non-vegetarian, right? The, the whole meal would be like completely chicken, sausages, oh, yeah. and everything. So my parents would just go for, a, I mean, they were neighbors, right? Like, their apartment's there, so just walk. walk yeah, yeah, yeah. But the whole Christmas, like a couple, they would celebrate Christmas. Like obviously, you have two parties or three parties. Every like the every person who would come on their Christmas party would know me that this person was going to attend the party. <laughs> so everyone who would come still talks about, oh, you know that girl who used to come to your parties and you wish me talk to. And I was I was ten till I attended them. Uh, so I think it's I think it's just a matter of you know convenience sometimes and just a matter of, but I think. A lot of, and this I say to a lot of friends, and I think we are all a little guilty of it, is sometimes mm. we think of the other person's convenience more than we need to. Mm. It, it might be what you're saying that uh, maybe it's not something that they would be into. Yeah. Maybe, like, I'm, I'm doing, I'm, I feel the same way. I'm like, okay, should, like, would they think we are weird? Because this year for, uh, for Diwali party, I'm having a Bollywood theme. So <clears throat> we're going to dress up in Bollywood movie actors outfits. Oh, wow. Hopefully, hopefully it works out. But uh, but then I'm like, okay, well, like I wanted to invite my, my son's friends. The son's friends are coming. But I was like, but then my husband said, you know, wouldn't they think we are weird if you're dressing up like in with weird mustaches and stuff? Because it's a Halloween slash uh, Diwali party, right? So I I love it. Like, that would be so weird. And like, yeah. So then we thought, okay, you know what? Let's give it some time and then we'll invite everyone. For thank around thanksgiving so let's let's see how that works out oh that's the crap i want to come to the default party i'll dress come. up as a, I'll you dress up come. As a Bollywood you character. Come. if you're on a flight somewhere take a book in richmond and i'll pick you up and then you can attend the party and then you can go okay cool i love it <laughs> so i think this is such a good like base for how how have all these experiences influenced you kind of mentioned like your one book but so there's all this culture that you've grown up with there's all these different personalities and backgrounds and so how has this impacted what you're writing and why you chose to write these stories so the simple reason that uh i was in kuwait during the gulf war mm. and uh, we had to move to india for those couple two three years uh for those who do not know the gulf war uh so basically in August of 1990, uh, Iraq invaded Kuwait, and mm -hmm. like for it, it was a state of war for quite some time. And then a lot of Indians had to like leave everything behind and they just go to India. Like we went to India with a bag of diapers. That's all we took. And when we came back, our whole house was looted. Uh, but wow. uh, uh, that's a that's another podcast there for you. Yes, it is. <laughs> yes, it is. But uh, in India. That whole phase that from 10 to 11 is it was a culture shock for me. Uh, I used to have people asking me, uh, where are you from? I had used to have people ask me, why is why do you speak funny? I used to have people asking me like questions like and this kids wow. used to ask me this. Uh, and I realized that I'm not like these kids, these people who look like me, I'm not like them. Uh, so I used to feel more at home in Kuwait than I used mm -hmm. to feel in India. And a lot of people and a lot of teachers and a lot of parents also don't realize that our kids are as Indian as they are American. Personally, I'm talking. And 
or maybe as Mexican as they are American or yeah. as Chinese as they are American. There's a lot of push for heritage when you're in a different country. And like I said, it's kind of like sand. And mm-hmm. I'm hoping that my books help parents and uh, everyone understand the constant struggle kids feel within them because their friends are from different cultures. Their friends are here. For them, it's not even a matter of whether who's Indian, who's American, whatever. It's just a person for them. But we as adults, we kind of tend to look at everything through our lenses because we've been conditioned to, we have our experiences and that's that's all fair. Mm-hmm. But our kids are not like us. Uh, so expecting them to follow our heritage to the T uh, mm. without understanding is very tricky to do. Uh, so I'm hoping that parents can see themselves. Like Amaya's Two Worlds is uh, my second last children's book that I've book that I wrote and that's based on my story and hoping that parents see that and realize why uh, for them America is home for the kids America is home for me Mm -hmm. uh, Richmond is the longest I've lived in a place it's it's I've been here like I think 16 years now wow Uh, as soon as I hit the 10 year mark that was the longest I've lived in any place so uh, this is home for me so if anyone comes and tells if my parents tell me oh you become more American than you're Indian you know because they're they're you know, kind of snarky like that. And I'd be like, but mom, we're citizens here. Like I, that's, I take pride in it because we've yeah. worked hard for it. We've built a home. It's not even about, you know, having the label of being an American citizen because some people do feel that. Yeah. For me, it's not about that. For me, it's where my home is. And uh, uh, like all the books talk about, like even uh, this book talks about the struggle a child feels about uh, other friends having a talent when they don't have it. And the holiday oh. season being a great opportunity to discuss that with kids. Um, how our skin sparkles, uh, this one talks about um, how our skin colors are different, but there's science and culture behind it. It's not just about science. It's not just about culture. Because when uh, I, when it ex- my son experienced it, and it wasn't a mil- ba- in a bad way, but it's a very natural question for a kid to ask, why am I this color and why are yeah. they that color? But most parents around me would just laugh it off. And I was oh. like, but wait, there's science behind it. There is, yeah. we are the way we are because of our heritage. Uh, Small or tall, we sparkle after all, is about my uh, daughter who uh, is constantly commented on because she is much, much smaller than uh, the age she, sub- she is. Mm-hmm. Uh, and it's hard on her. And I'm hoping that, you know, her and other kids in touch would, all the kids who've read it uh, have understood reading it that you know it's genetics you know it's not in our control parents often do not know parents will see in facebook groups asking that oh you know what can i do to help my kid rain i mean it's it's ridiculous mm-hmm. like, I, I, I have to go in there and talk to parents saying that can you not put that feeling into your kids when you're trying to feed them extra milk and you know making them go for classes and running around and things like yeah. that just hoping that they increase their height the kid has no control on it it's your genes yeah you know, I mean, of course, you could probably do hormone modification these days, but do you really want to put your child through that? No. Nope. Before they they are Selena. of age to consent, you know, before they understand <sighs> what they're putting their body through. Uh, so, you know, uh, all my books, even uh, this book that I wrote for adults, it's it's a collection of short stories. Oh. My first, uh, first uh, fiction book for adults. The first two I wrote were... Um, uh, uh, non-fiction books for adults to help them help them help their kids be of more you know multicultural and global mindset but this book and the one i'm writing right now these are about how we we are constantly breaking stereotypes you know uh within even our community because a lot of people are like oh you know south indians speak weirdly i don't understand their language but hey you know what in the north also there are many languages that south indians feel that you know you speak it and we don't understand it Mm-hmm. So then why is this feeling that, oh, only when the South, because the South language is very different. It sounds different. Uh, so no matter how you think that, oh, language is a great way to connect and language is, you know, very important. But language is also often used to divide people. It's often all, also used to exclude people. <sighs> and that is something that you need to understand uh, consciously. I mean, and it's Good point. And I'm not saying that you shouldn't speak your heritage language. Huh. But you need to be mindful of the responsibility it puts on you. Yeah. Like if you are speaking, like I remember uh, when I was at my son's preschool and this lady came up to me and she started speaking in Hindi just because she wanted to speak a little, say something snarky about the teacher. 
and i spoke replied to her in english defending the teacher because i don't think it's right when you're in a public setting which is majority english speaking you are know, speaking in a different language if it comes out naturally that's fine but yeah. if you're specifically choosing to do it to exclude someone that's not okay you know and mm. if you know that the group you are in there is one person who cannot speak the language you have english as an option you have other common languages that people are aware of use those so this story is i mean and even like girls having their periods there's a lot of taboo in indian culture uh, uh, in you know what things girls can do what they cannot do i'm often surprised that people follow it even in this day and age uh, and i've spoken about that you know one of the stories talks about that so there are a lot of things that you know uh, people talk about I, i that people don't talk about rather and you know that we need to be more mindful of mm-hmm. and that's what i'm hoping through all my books that you know we all are just a little bit more mindful and culturally sensitive towards ourselves let alone others you know right. others is way far off you know it's a long journey to you know being empathetic to others yeah. but just understanding our own children and understanding our struggles and helping our kids see that you know you are you and it's fine Yes. Oh my gosh, there's so many things. I feel like there's like four podcasts we could do just in some <laughs> conversation. So I'm trying to take notes. Uh, but I like that I like that you, there's a couple of things I love that you brought up the the skin color. My my son is just now being like, "Oh, how come she has brown curly hair and how come that that kid is, looks darker than me?" And I and I just because people everybody there's different shapes and sizes to everybody. Yes. That that girl looks fat. Well, beauty yes. comes in all sizes, you know? Yes. Like so yes. I'm very specific with yes. him. And I have like one of my best friends is um she's always struggled with her, her weight and she's tried like everything, right? So my yes. son kept saying, "Oh, you're so, you're so squishy. You're so squishy." And she was getting upset, obviously. And I said to him, I said, "Declan, I was like, squishy just means you're full of love mm. and she was like oh thank god because i was getting embarrassed about like what yeah. he was saying and this is like mm-hmm. my best one of my best friends since yeah. i was like but you don't realize sometimes that you can't just laugh it off or yes. you know disregard it and what we say yeah. and how we act against all these different things to our kids now they're they're remembering so yeah. like it's i should i need to tell my 5 year old mm. that hey beauty's all shapes and sizes and you know this is we're all full of love and yes. that is, you know just because someone looks like this doesn't mean anything and then just like i think what you're doing with your books is kind of the you know essence of this whole podcast is like sharing our stories to understand like you know we might grow up in india or kuwait or florida or you know argentina but there's st- we're still there's still so many human elements that we share and things yes. that we can bring to the table yes. to um you know just understand humanity in different ways and it doesn't yes. mean you have to go live there and do it yes. but you can be respectful of it and you can choose what's right for you and your family yes. and understanding and i feel like this is where you are hyper self aware is like understanding what your how your actions are hindering or hurting the status quo of the world so yeah. when we are talking snarkly in other languages because we're trying to be condescending and cruel that yeah. isn't okay it, yeah. and it's not okay for you to do it in english or spanish yeah. or hindi yes. or whatever but yeah. are we trying to or are we having side conversations to help educate inform and empower each other yeah. yeah that's what i'm taking out of what you're saying and yeah. i think those are such beautiful messages that to give our kids yeah through your books so let's talk about your books <laughs> Thank you for letting me have my sip box moment because I was like, oh, there's so many good things that she's talking about here. Um how do you think your books can help support that, you know, raising a world kids? Uh if the collection itself I think is slowly growing into something that would empower any child. Uh and I'm not saying this because, you know, I've written them to be honest. Uh because they come from i say this because they come from a place of understanding the struggle they mm. come from a place of seeing my kids struggle and wanting not other kids not to struggle uh <laughs> i know a lot of people are writing books these days and a lot of um uh, there is a lot more content out there but my book specifically like you know find a marriage of today and yesterday oh. i have done the effort of helping people understand that 
culture and myth, uh, mythology because people think oh mythology is like fiction you know whatever but you can use those mythological stories not just to just share about heritage but they can also be used to help a child understand why their skin color is different mm. uh, it can also be helped for a child to understand that all sizes are beautiful whether you're tall whether you're small you know mm-hmm. uh, it can be um, heritage uh, and like for example sparkles of joy is uh, a book about christmas hanukkah and uh, diwali oh i so, love that yeah so it's it was uh, like i said it came from my son because he loves celebrating christmas with all his friends uh, every year uh, sorry diwali with every, and i was like okay there's a story there and in the book i made sure that i mentioned that people understand that diwali is not just celebrated about one because you know mm. shri ram comes from ayodhya because this is a misunderstanding that many indians have that they, they don't even many indians don't even know why they celebrate diwali culturally it was hilarious why i had i had one of my friends daughter reading and she's like i didn't know we celebrate diwali because of this <laughs> and it's beautiful you know if you educate even one person mm. i remember when raising world children started we started with 35 writers we were publishing three articles a week uh, it was it was crazy and uh, of course it was new for me right it's a new yeah. it was obviously a lot of work and things like that and uh, i had one of my friends ask me that you know what do you achieve, hope to achieve by this because obviously she wanted to know like what was the business yeah. end goal of it and it was no i mean honestly it was not there was no thought behind it the point was just that i saw there was a lack of representation of mm. multicultural parenting there were not many people talking collaboratively like of course people had their single single bo- blogs right but i wanted one place where people came and experienced different stories and i said and i still remember my reply and that applies to my books also that even if one person or one child reads the book and learns something from it uh my job is done i can mm-hmm. die happy Amen. you know uh because um, even the uh, adult books that are uh i'm trying to see yes i'm sorry i turned around i should oh, have tried it yeah, this so, is your podcast you do what you want absolutely <laughs> you can turn around so um the biggest complaint i have from parents often is that oh we want our kids to read but we don't like reading right so this is an old cover for strong roots have no fear this is not the new cover anymore but if you see if you open any page in this book you can learn something oh you love know, that if, 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 that's for both my books okay no matter how um, if you have 2 minutes you open a page you read two things you read two sections it's all with headings subheadings bolded italicized everything i made sure everything stands out so even if you like just open the ro- book read two lines you would learn something wow because uh, even uh, within it's a short it's a short story collection but i made sure the font was bigger the writing the sh- stories are real some people have complained the stories are really short but most people love it they're like with one cup of tea i finish two stories i it's great you know uh, most <laughs> people love that about it which is fine you know there are all kinds of people and that's absolutely fine not everyone's going to love my work mm-hmm. but the point is that you know if you want information all these books are make it very easy for it to imbibe and uh, that's what the aim has always been is to make sure i'm telling stories that help empower educate and entertain and how do you think um parents can handle some of these tougher conversations that come up sometimes it seems like again it seems like just your background and having like living in kuwait as an indian mm-hmm. and then i mean obviously you've moved around so you've lived in different continents on this planet so like how can parents address these difficult conversations of diversity um productively honestly full stop that <laughs> just just you know uh, honestly and age appropriately those are two words that all i tell everyone you know a lot of us and i wouldn't and i'm talking about diversity and i'm let's just talk about difficult topics because diversity is a relatively easier topic to talk about if mm. you think about it uh because but then i always tell people that you know if some if your child is like 4 year old and they say why is that lady wearing a pindi you don't need to shush her you can ask her yeah you know? 90% of the 90% she probably herself doesn't know why she's wearing a bindi okay it just looks pretty 
but traditionally <laughs> there is a reason why you're doing it mm-hmm. so if you don't ask her you don't shush them you google it because you have yeah. a beautiful app in your you have a computer in your hand which can give you information immediately and you can take the effort of typing two things and saying why do people traditionally wear bindis and they will explain to you that you know there is a nerve over here that they traditionally not the sticky ones but when you put kumkum the powder this like a, a healing powder mm-hmm. not kumkum is not healing haldi and uh, uh sandalwood paste those help cool the body you know oh. you know there are many such things so and uh, if you follow raising world children the instagram page i have these weird questions keep uh, popping up in my head and i research them and i put the information together and i share it on my platform yeah. i'm like we uh, cuz navratri is coming where people dance for nine nights and i'm like why do people dance in circles like <laughs> i question and there was a reason for it and i shared that reason on my platform i'm like how are people going to know that right yeah not anyone people and if you have these questions popping up and the only way for these questions to pop up is for you to have ample free time with your kids i know we are all very mm-hmm. over scheduled we are very busy in our life mm-hmm. number one tip for anyone to have difficult and diverse conversations is to have free time with your kids you know make sure you have that make sure you let them talk don't just talk to them let them talk let them talk about their school let them talk rubbish it's okay it's fine you don't have to and i'm i'm guilty of it first i i, I have to make every moment a teachable moment that's a problem that's a <laughs> but i i control it most days i try to and i bring it up on a later date like a lot of us yeah. have this instinct that oh if someone says oh you know i made fun of my friend's skin color and you're like uh, okay because in that moment they would get defensive so take some time off give them give it a couple of days yeah. and then talk about it you know make sure that environment is listener friendly uh to teach your kids to listen with their eyes their ears their mind and their heart mm. uh, this is something i spe- tell all my students i teach creative writing in the afternoons and uh, i tell this to all my students they're like why by heart like we understand the rest but i said because a lot of times someone who's speaking is not someone you like right but a lot of people have this misunderstanding so that true. if someone you don't like they have nothing good to say mm. so that's not true a lot of times people who because sometimes you don't like your parents also right in that moment you're yeah. like oh, they're annoying so talk to your parents about uh, sorry kids about always and i think we all need to at this point i think at this juncture in life we all need to apply this is to listen with our hearts also number 3 is to do the research mm. don't just Uh, answer questions with whatever information you have uh, if you have scientific and cultural answers that you know are correct that's fine but take a moment to do the research yourself so that you're not passing on the wrong information or the wrong stereotypes you're not passing them on you know mm-hmm, mm-hmm. All of, so and uh, number 4 i think is to make them age appropriate is to make sure that uh, you're not using too big words uh, you, you can you are not uh, making it difficult to understand because of course when it's difficult to grasp uh, give them examples which is related to oh you know uh, how would you feel mm-hmm. and i think that brings me to the fifth one is play acting where it's diverse conversations uh, when you're talking about racism colorism it's like imagine yourself um, if you were being ruled by a country for years and years you know that there's a certain mentality that comes from that and this yeah. this condition would be better for maybe 7 years old and above to mm-hmm. explain to them why certain people are conditioned like that i think this is a new word that has come into my vocabulary conditioning and people use it uh, to shame but i think we need to give more grace mm-hmm. uh, because a person's conditioning is not in their hands their experiences are not in their hands just their yeah their parents what their parents have taught them is not in their hands there's a really good movie you should watch called uh, rocky or rani ki prem kahani uh it has addressed a lot of these uh current woke problems mm-hmm. uh because woke is not even supposed to be used in this term there is an actual proper use of it which yeah. we all use it wrongly uh i was using it wrongly till i didn't understand and i took the trouble of understanding it there are a lot of prejudice is coming up now because we are shaming each other for not knowing stuff I yeah. think we need to all make room for each other and be graceful in our conversations right. as adults and as children. Absolutely, I think more so as adults. 
Uh, absolutely. Just and I, <laughs> keyboard warriors. Um, uh, and I, I like that you, you brought up that, um, having grace and like the conditioning because it doesn't matter where you live or what religion you are. Those are mm-hmm. all ways to be conditioned to life, how life should be in quotes, yes. like what's right, what's wrong. Yes. Yes. And it just because you might be Muslim and I might be Christian or you might mm-hmm. be this or that, it doesn't matter. Yeah. That's just the way you were brought up. So why are we, trampling on each other you know what I mean or like I think what how I try to approach life and what I'm trying to give my son is be curious inquisitive and respectful because there's not one way to be a human yes and I think that (laughs) thank you um and I think um one thing I wanted to point out too is that, um, when I was pregnant and I just kind of looked around and I was like, oh my goodness, I've never had to think about so many different things because there's always been a white character in a movie. And it's just, and I, I don't have the guilt for it, but I just, it's just understanding that yes. that has been my reality. That is the way I was socialized. That is how I was conditioned. Yeah. But the world is bigger than my Irish Italian heritage, you know, and even those two are vastly different entities as well. Um, what can I do to help my son understand that the world isn't, he's half British, so the British American yes. way. How yes. do I give him that? Yes. And so one of the things I started seeking out was books with just like characters. Like yes. if he, we went to New York one time to see like the Rockettes, he loves dancing. And I said, you can pick one toy at F.E.O. Swartz, right? So he picks out this gorgeous like black Barbie doll. And I think that leaning into what our kids love and appreciate yes. and challenging our own biases like mm-hmm. of course i'm biased of course i have un, yes. you know unrealized prejudices like i'm yes. not going to sit here and pretend that i'm this oh look at me i'm so great yeah. um yeah. but i think leaning into that and giving myself grace because i was socialized a very specific way and it was yeah. very different from you growing up in kuwait yeah. Yeah. like th- we can still come to like terms with each other and understand yeah. and learn something and that's what this whole podcast is about and I think it's just brilliant that you're bringing up this is how we can help our kids but really and I think it's like our generation like this millennialish generation yeah. who are like we don't like the way we grew up and yeah. we don't like that about this let's yeah. change it for the future and yeah. I think we really are taking it and being like okay that's not I'm not doing that and I'm not doing that and you know what I don't need to be scared or yeah. freaked out you know I'm gonna ask hey yes. why do you have this on your forehead I, yeah. I don't understand anything about it and it's not yeah. ignorant or rude it's yeah. curious yeah. and I think if we stay curious and respectful and in a respectful manner like oh my gosh the issues we could solve in the world <laughs> yes yes and and I a lot of people have often tell, told me that you know um uh, oh, it's not our job to educate people. And I'm like, then whose job is it? Mm, oh, I like that. Then whose job is it? Like if you are staying, standing and saying, oh, I'm tired of educating people and I'm tired of this. I think our generation, yes, is standing up, which mm-hmm. is wonderful. Our generation is taking notice, is looking inwards. It's wonderful. But I think we're also taking it to extreme in one direction. Like mm-hmm. my son comes home and he's like, mom, I'm so tired of answering people how to say my name. I'm done with it I don't care how you say my name just say it and be done with it let's move on and I was like and that's what my next book is about for people to hopefully understand that yes sometimes people I grew up in in Indians okay Brianna I was surrounded by Indians I don't think one Arab person ever took my name ever but no Indian ever got my name right let me tell you (laughs) okay and a lot of Americans, and I'm talking about, you know, Caucasian people and, you know, yeah. other cultures and stuff specifically. They're like, oh, how do we say your name? I don't want to get it wrong. And I'm like, it's fine. You try. If you can't, it's absolutely fine. Mm-hmm. You don't have to be sorry about it. You don't just try. Make an effort. It's okay. I have Indians. I, my, my students' parents, they write my spelling wrong. I'll correct them. They'll write it again. They'll write it down. And I'm like, it's okay. It doesn't right. it doesn't. <laughs> they're addressing me. They, they they trust their child in me. That's more important than how mm-hmm. they say my name. Right. You know? I mean, you have to understand that. And I think uh, balance and moderation and, you know, in a world where being divisive 
gets you more likes and being uh, standing up for your values no matter the cost to another person if you're shaming someone else mm-hmm. that is what gets you more followers it is so important to remember and speak up and say hey you know what let's be graceful let's be kind let's be respectful and let's understand that that person is the way they are because of yeah. many reasons yep you are no one to take a mo- and i am sorry if this applies to anyone and whoever feels bad about it i don't care but if you are taking the moral high ground in even one thing in your life you are absolutely wrong Ooh. if you say oh i do this and that makes me better than you mm. i'm sorry no matter if you're standing against colorism no matter what you're standing against racism if you're shaming another person who's just being themselves i don't think that's the right way to do it the mm. understanding come from a, which person priyana tell me if you stand up and say hey what you're doing is wrong is going to listen to you nobody ever nobody they're just going to get defensive and get upset and then cry and get really annoyed and you know you may use their name and you may use a situation but to what end at the end of the day everyone yeah. knows what you're doing right yeah so it's a good point you know i'm so tired of people being divisive and everyone follows each like yes i faced colorism in my life and i get it and i get why people get so upset also and i'm not saying that i'm better than that them even in that respect because i understand why people are upset i understand yeah. they've experienced colorism they've experienced racism and that's why it triggers them so much but then it's not everyone's fault right yeah you know we all have to understand that our trauma our healing begins again with us Ooh, once yeah. we do that and then we talk to other people and share our story you don't have to be blame people you can just share your story and say i faced this i'm guaranteeing you if you heard a couple of things that happened to me you'd be like aditi i would never like even just for example with the language thing yeah. i'm sure if people hear it they're going to be like oh i want to be more mindful about that i don't want to do that you know people who want to learn will learn if you just share your story openly and kindly and lovingly and say you know i faced this there will be 100 people standing yeah. up and saying i i am so sorry you faced that i will try to do better you know but yeah no you brought we up live in a world which is very weird <laughs> yes we do and we um uh there's again there's i think we there's like five more podcasts we t- we can mm-hmm. have i think we keep adding yes. stuff on here but i think that's a really brilliant point um that we overlook sometimes like people just want to scream and shout yes. who's wrong yes. without really getting a clear concise way of that's actually hypocritical what you're yes. doing yes. so how about we act better yes. and choose better yes. and intrinsically yes. be better instead of chastising everyone else and yes. i can agree with you more that people who want to make a difference and really want to change and grow are doing it yes and they're teaching their kids how to be better better and they're teaching their kids to be kind the the last thing i say to declan every day before he goes to school is okay choose kindness i do the same thing it's not that hard and i say and I, you know what i say it as much for him as i do myself because it could be wicked out there and it's easy to get caught up in the mess yeah. so i I love all those points you made. Um, let's talk a little bit about where people can find your books and your social media. Uh, your website is raisingworldkids.com? Children. Ah, uh, children. Yes. Okay, Raising, Raising World, World Children. children. Uh, yes, my website is raisingworldchildren.com. Uh, uh, you can reach me at contact at raisingworldchildren.com. You can just DM me. I'm mostly online. <laughs> Slide in there. you can uh, you can uh, of course uh, email, uh, find me my personal email uh, sorry instagram is aditi oh my god i'm fumbling aditi w sing uh, and of course you can google me and there are many ways to reach me mm-hmm. if you have any issues or if you have questions i'm always happy to answer them if you need resources i'm always happy to find some for you if i cannot help you myself uh, i do uh, love talking about uh, cultural uh, issues and about how mindfulness matters and uh, mm. I share about my publishing journey as well so if you would like please you can follow me on instagram at raising world children awesome um, is there anything else you'd like to share any other nada we didn't know we needed to know 
Uh, I, I, I help people uh, write their books. <laughs> so if you like my vibe, I think you could reach out to me. I'm an editor of children's books. I specialize in, of course, cultural sensitivity and self-empowerment. Uh, and uh, I edit books. I self-publish. I uh, do self-publishing coaching, writing coaching. And um, I would love to get to know you. And I'm, I offer free 20-minute consults if you want to just see how we can work together. So you can reach out to me and check that out too. Awesome, Aditi. Thank you so much for your time. Again, you can find her at RaisingWorldChildren.com. And until next time, I hope you guys are learning something you didn't know you needed to know. <laughs>